Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan here, back again with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial, and today's video is all about having fun and experimenting. So what I'd like to share with you is just a couple of different ways that you can be more creative with your leads in your tracks. So what I've got here is an idea that I've come up with over the past day or so, and uh, why don't we start things off by just playing the example that I have here, and then after that we'll dive into the details and take things from there. Alright, here we go. Alright, there we go. Now at first it might be a little bit difficult to tell exactly what I've done to the lead here that would be considered more creative or unique, so let's take a look at the MIDI notes and explore things a bit further. Okay, so now that we have our piano roll open, let's actually explain what's going on here. Now in orange we have the main melody that's being played, and in red we sort of have these uh, harmonic accents which I've added afterwards. Now the whole idea behind the sound here is that you want to use a lead or synth sound that is monophonic or one voiced. So what that means is that every time a new note is being played, the previous note stops playing. So regardless if you have notes that are overlapping or chords, it doesn't matter, only one note or sound can be played or heard at any given time. So now if we zoom in here just a little bit more, we can see where I've placed these sort of um, accented notes and it's been done so in a musical way, which means either in thirds, fourths, or fifths, or just any way, any note that sounds good. Now, sometimes I've put these up, you can see higher, this one's about an octave and I think maybe a fifth higher, and they're only being played for a short time, some of them, so what happens is that, again, remembering that every time a new note hits, the other one stops and it's being re-triggered, because these sort of accents are happening so fast, you sort of end up with this kind of squeaky, um, harmony sound that's just playing for a quick second and you sort of get a really nice attack on the synth sound. So this will make more sense if I play it solo, so let's go ahead and solo this really quickly and we'll compare it uh, both the creative part and then um, I'll play the normal lead uh, which doesn't have any of the accents on it. So let's have a listen. Okay, so now if I go ahead and once more I'll solo this again, let's just take another close look at some of these accents here, just played um, a couple of times, which should give you a better idea of what the attack portion of the synth sounds like. So you can see that without those accents, uh, the synth is just playing a basic melody, but personally, and of course this is completely subjective, I like the way that these sort of higher um, harmony accents make the lead synth sound, especially that the previous note gets cut off and the new note starts, you know, once it's being played. So you can end up with some really cool parts or sounds, and I think what I did at first is I didn't at first place these exactly on the right note the first time. Uh, I think I did a run through where I played the melody and then I let it loop over and I played a different melody over top. So the notes ended up in a different place and then I just shortened some of them and kept the ones that I liked. So we can see that this used to be a completely different melody but this note here, this one here, this one down here, I shortened them and used them in conjunction with the other um, note that I had played previously. So hopefully that makes sense. 
It's just the way that I went about creating this lead synth line. So that's one thing that I've done, which sort of adds more interest to this lead uh, sound here. Another thing that I've done is if we go back and compare the two again, uh, let's just go ahead and play uh, again from the halfway point and we'll listen from there. Okay, so you'll probably notice that there's a couple other things that I've done here as well. So if you go back to the normal lead, this sort of area here is just, you know, it's just playing some notes, but I wanted something else going on here and I ended up creating a little bit of a triplet section, uh, which is what you hear right here. So again, just one other quick thing you can do uh, to portions of uh, your synth and of course it doesn't have to be just a lead sound you can put this in anywhere that you uh, think it'll fit but again it just sort of adds more interest and it makes it more interesting <laughs> uh, for lack of any better word and I think the last thing there were sort of three things I did so the first thing was sort of adding those uh, red accent notes to get a really interesting attack sound then I've gone ahead and added this sort of triplet section uh, again comparing the other two let's see here Right, so it looks like if we go back to the beginning here, if we sort of switch between the two, you'll notice that some notes were placed an octave higher. So let's go back one more time and play this uh, starting section here. Yeah, so you can see that just in a couple of different places, I took the note and I made them an octave higher because I think it sounded better. So again, just some really simple things you can do that'll add more interest to your tracks. Okay, so now that we've explained the process behind each of these uh, three different sort of creative tips for your lead sounds, let's go ahead and compare the two uh, while we're playing the whole track so you can hear the difference. So first, let's go ahead and mute the first part. So it's going to play the normal lead first. Um, just get rid of this one here. And then we're going to go ahead and mute the lead for the second part. I think this looped section is the same. So again, we're going to play the normal part first, and then we're going to play the more creative lead first. And just be your own judge. You can determine what sounds better. Like I said, this is more of a subjective creative technique here. And hopefully my idea behind this is that it'll inspire you to sort of come up with your own tricks or techniques for your songs in the future. So without further ado, let's play these two back to back and see how they sound. All right, there we have it guys. So as I mentioned earlier, this was just really meant to be more of a fun and uh, creative tutorial, hoping to spark some of those creative juices within you. And um, if you don't use any of these particular techniques here, hopefully this will inspire you to come up with some techniques of your own and just, uh, you know, as always with music, play around with things, have fun, and uh, just try to make some cool sounds, right? So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you did like this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up as it really does help me. And of course, if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future and you're not subscribed, then uh, consider subscribing if you felt that I've earned your subscription today. So once again, thanks for watching everyone. We'll catch you in the next one.